watching. Thank you for joining. Uh, ladies Thanks. and gentlemen, this is Sue Strait. She is a, a wine industry expert, a writer, a wine judge, and a wine club associate at St. Francis Winery. So a very impressive background. Thank you. Wonderful experience. You know, briefly tell us about your, you know, background and, and Okay. Thanks for well, thanks for having me. I escaped to um, Healdsburg, of all places, in 1981. I moved here from from LA, and not too not too uh, you know not too long after that, I found myself in the wine industry. I was waiting tables at um, Giorgio's, which is this Italian place. So I was working at Giorgio's, and I met the tasting room manager for Windsor Vineyards. It's it was uh, before Rodney Strong Vineyards was Rodney Strong. So that was my, my first job um, in the industry. I started, uh, was, we were doing table service, so it wasn't a big, a big stretch from, um, from waiting tables at Giorgio's because we, you know, we had menus on the table. Here's your six wines, you know, pick them. I learned about wine on the job and I met my mentor there, um, Carol Shelton. She was the winemaker. I've judged a ton of competitions, but that's kind of where it started. I started working at Windsor in the tasting room and then uh, worked my way up and then took a management job at um, Fopiano and then Fieldstone and then White Oak. And I think I've worked for about a dozen wineries um, in, since 1982. Most of my time in the industry has been spent managing tasting rooms and wine clubs. Um, I've had a few positions with smaller wineries where I was like director of market, sales and marketing where I was <laughs> like doing everything. I was uh, managing the wine club and the tasting room and um, working with distributors, you know, selling, um, you know, packing up the bag and hitting the road and, and uh, working with different sales reps. And I've also done quite a bit of writing. A couple come, came in and we were talking and she worked for the San Diego Union Tribune. And she says, hey, we need a wine writer. You know, we want, we need to, oh. set, we want to set up this whole new this whole new segment, would you be interested in doing it? And I said, sure. So I sent a bunch of ideas and um, then I, I formatted it and I, I started providing weekly content, you know, including the, you know, tasting panel, tasting notes and, um, and question of the week and tasting tips. And when I, got, I, I was lucky and I've worked really hard, you know, to get where I am. And I'm not, I'm not a Psalm. I don't, you know, I've been living that life. Um, I, you know, I raised, I raised a son as a single mom in the wine industry. So I didn't have the time or the money to take any of the classes. Plus the fact those classes weren't even really available, but, right. um, but I've spoken at, I've done seminars. I've spoken at the junior college several times on, at different classes. The only thing that I haven't really done is production. I've never, I've never made wine. I'm, uh, yeah, there's a lot, actually. The first thing is know your product. Be really familiar with the wine. You know, taste it. Get your own descriptors. Don't just read off the back of the label. You know, get passionate about it and ask questions. My biggest pet peeve with tasting room staff and, and retail people in general is that they're talking at people. They're not engaging them. They're not talking with people. People love to... to talk they love to um, feel smart so it's always good to say so what do you drink at home you know do you like red wine or white wine take a little extra time to engage and you'll sell a lot more wine yeah. start a conversation basically and you, you gotta you gotta yeah. build a relationship even if it's only even if the relationship's only 10 minutes long ask them the questions and, yeah, and yeah. the other the other big tip would be believe in what you're selling you know, believe that this is something that these people really want. I'm putting something in their hands that they're going to love. But you don't know that until you find out what they like to drink, you know. And then, right, right, right. And then also ask it, talk about food. Make them comfortable, you know. Like if they say, you know, if you're pouring Chardonnay, like let's say you're at, you're at um, Whole Foods and you're, you're just representing a Chardonnay and a Rosé, right? And you ask them, well, what do you drink at home? Well, I usually drink big zins and cabs. Well, you know, you could actually drink this. You could drink this with like a tuna steak. You could drink this on a really hot day when it's too hot for your cab, you know. And conversely, if you're just pouring cab and, and zin, you know, and they say, well, I usually like white wines. Man, this is so good with grilled food, you know. Like you've got some friends over, just try it, 
you know. The Zin's fruitier, you're gonna, you might like that a little bit better if you don't like big tannic cabs. Try the Zin, you might, you might really like it, you know. And, and I think a, another big tip is talk to these people like you're giving your family, a member of your family a recommendation for something. You know, you're gonna right. love this. You know, like um, get comfortable with the people, you know. Um, and this kind of job is not for everybody. You know, not everybody right. can, can turn that on, you know, um, and it is a little bit of it is acting, you know, for, with me for all these years, I zip into my shiny suit when I jump behind the bar or I'm, whenever I'm interfacing with people, it's like, da, 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 you know, and, and mm. you gotta be, you gotta ha put your game face on if you're going to do this. Right. Cause what you're about the entertainment. Yeah. to sell more the experience um, and make them, you know, people buy wine on an emotional basis. You know, they, um, if they're unfamiliar with the label, um, let's say they'd never heard of, of Harlan Estate or Screaming Eagle and you're, you're standing there with this really expensive wine. You t first off, you have to really believe in it. You've ha you have to have been able to taste it and, and be passionate about it and convey that passion to the people. Um, you also have to be able to talk about, you know, this is the perfect wine when you and your partner, you know, you go out to the beach and you're having a barbecue and, um, and you're watching the sun go down and, you know, and you're, you're grilling up, you're grilling up um, ribeye steaks and you've got, you know, and you brought all your other food and maybe you're going to pop the question or maybe it's your anniversary and you want a special wine like that. This is the perfect wine for that. You talk about the situation that you can enjoy it with. Paint a picture for them. Um, I would, you know, I, or or tell, or even make something up and say, I've had this wine. You know, um, we, you know, we went out to dinner with some friends, and I brought this wine, and we and we had steak a poivre, we had whatever, and um, and it was just one of the best nights of my life. And this wine was part of it, and I'll never forget it. I kept the bottle. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I have come across situations where we're selling in Costco, and, and this is a real life example. We had two Tempranillos that we represented. One was $8, one was 19 Yeah. And my staff would have, you know, they would tell me, look, it's hard to sell the $19 one when the, the $8 one is right next to it, and, I, and, and they both have the same rating. And I always told them the car example. If you go to a car app like Edmunds or CarMax, you know, where they rate cars, I tell people, well, uh, a $20,000 Honda Accord that's rated five stars compared to a $70,000 Mercedes rated 3.5 stars, it's not apples to apples. Right. You know? and, and that's the example I always use. And that usually seems to help people because it's, I mean, yeah, you get what you pay for and, 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 and uh, wine is no different than any other product, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So many times working in a tasting room, people would say, I don't like Chardonnay. And then I, I would just get all Dr. Seuss on it, on them, you know, like, try it, try it. And you may, and you will drink it in your car and you will drink it in a bar and, um, it's a matter of gently educating people that Chardonnay is like the pasta of wine. You can make it so many different ways. You can make it clean and crisp. You can, and you can make it big and oaky and buttery and there's everything in between. Same with Rieslings and Gewürztraminers. You know, they can be bone dry and austere or they can be all the way up to dessert wines. And it's, again, it's a matter of, of saying, well, what kind of foods do you usually eat? You know, what do you, um, what you know do you and if you're and if you're having if you're having dessert you know and and you want to try a sweet wine for all for all you know you should certainly try a late harvest Gewurztraminer or a late harvest Riesling but if it's a you know if you want to try something like a, a beautiful Alsatian Riesling that goes with everything that's dry <coughs> don't be afraid to try it you know and then and then also forge the relationship and say hey let me know what you think you know, and be really like genuine about it. You know, I've made so many friends working in tasting rooms with my customers over the years that, 
it's you have to you know, put yourself out there a little bit and say, hey, I want to know what you think, you know, to just, yeah. you know, humor me and try this, you know, and it's okay if you don't like it. And if they don't like it, you know, conversely, you talk them into it and they're like, oh, I don't like that. You can go, hey, you know, everybody's palate's different. You know, um, we're all we're all different. And that's why there's so many fantastic wines. But it, again, it comes down to sales ability and and engaging with the customer and saying, hey, just, just come on, give it a shot. Humor me. And then let me know what you think. Well, one of the things that I've learned recently is that California wine is so diverse. You know, um, I just recently worked for a, a Pinot and Chardonnay producer that was incredibly Burgundian. You know, we... Wow, that's uh, unusual. Yeah, a, a, a lot of our clientele were European because they liked, um, it was all cool climate. And my short answer to that would be that California wine is so diverse. We've got so many microclimates. We've got um, so many different winemaking styles. We can do it all, you know? So um, I, that, that would be my short answer, you know? Um, Do, I think, does, yeah. Well, look, Hey, uh, again, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is Sue Strait, an incredibly diverse background, a wine professional, a judge, a wine writer. Did I leave something out? Um, uh, well, I was a wine buyer at Oakville Grocery. Oh, that was and, fun. And a wine buyer. So you yeah. kind of like a jack of all trades, but for for, for wine. So yeah. Well, we'll yeah, go, I'm a well, Renaissance again, woman. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, yeah, absolutely. So again, thank you for your time. It was it was very informative, and uh, I definitely learned some things. So I appreciate it, and I, I wish you all the best. Stay safe uh, with this Thanks. thing going on. And,